Hi everyone, in this video we're gonna make these really cute genuine leather circle earrings. Now these earrings would be super cute whether you cut them out of genuine leather or even if you decide you want to use faux leather for your earrings. The fun circles with the circle cut out are such a popular look right now. I've started seeing them just about everywhere and I love it because they are just so, so easy to make. You'll see how quick they come together. One of the things I'm gonna show you today in the video is how you can put your earrings directly on this bottom piece of your earring if you do not want to use jump rings. If you've ever tried this, it's very possible that you've struggled because if you don't use the right technique, you end up bending all this wire in here and then your hook is not usable. If you find anything helpful in today's video, please take just a second and tap that like button. I'd really appreciate that. And I think we're ready to get started. Okay, we're gonna start by getting our earring SVG file loaded onto our canvas here by coming over to images and clicking on the images icon on the left and then select the earring. This file does come with a hole and without. I think I am going to do the one this time with a hole. Those of you that watch a lot of my videos know I usually don't. I'm a little worried about my ability to judge the top because of all the roundness here. So I think I'm just gonna try the hole. And then I can see it's selected because a green box around. So I come down to the lower right hand corner and I click on insert images and I get this earring onto my mat. It looks like the earring comes in at around two point, if you round it, four inches. That's a pretty good height. I think I'm just gonna keep it um, how they have it. And so I do need to get another one. So while it's highlighted, I'm going to click duplicate and that gives me my second earring. Now today I am using my genuine leather. Um, here's what the back of that looks like. I think it's super pretty. Um, I'm only showing you this because if you're using a material uh, that has a backing that doesn't look, uh, look in a way that you like it, maybe it's a felt or like a knit material that's a color that you just don't like and you wanna cover it, this is where you can consider printing another set. So you would just wanna duplicate these to make four. Um, but I just don't need to do that today because I am using a genuine leather and the back looks beautiful. And by the way, I'm gonna link up my genuine leather kit. This is this box I did. If you didn't see this video, make sure you watch it. It is loaded with so many colors and uh, types of genuine leathers. It's scraps and um, I'm having so much fun making different earrings with it. The other thing you wanna look at if you are doing genuine leather is just make sure you know your pattern if I wanted to have a little bit of the smaller material, I would want to make sure this was facing the top and then this would be the top of my circle and the bottom of my circle. I'm just going to go with all the bigger, so I'm going to make this top the top part of my mat. So I'm ready to go ahead and click the Make It button in the upper right hand corner. So I'm going to click on Make It and it's just showing me my, my earrings on my mat. Now these are symmetrical. Uh, but out of habit, I always try to tell you all, because when we put our leather onto our mat, we do good side face down. Um, we should always clip that mirror out of good habit um, because we're cutting it, I'm gonna say backwards in reverse. All right, we're gonna click on continue here, the green button in the lower right hand corner. And the next thing we're going to need to do is to select our material. And we are using genuine leather today. The menu you see here are all the materials that I have added to my favorites menu. It makes it a lot easier and you can just select it right here. But in case you haven't done that, you can click on browse all materials. It brings up all the Cricut materials or all the materials that Cricut will cut. And I just scroll down to the leather section. Here's the different options. And I'm just going today with my genuine leather uh, because this thickness looks uh, very like a very normal genuine leather. There's the metallic leather on here. Cricut metallic leather is a little bit thicker, but I think I'm okay going with my genuine leather. And then I can click on my green button at the bottom. All right, it does give me a couple of prompts. Number one, it's reminding me I need to move these star wheels. I'll show you that. 
and it's reminding me that I need to make sure I've got the deep point blade loaded into clamp B. So let's take a look at how to do both those things. All right, these are the white star wheels they're talking about. Um, these are normally spread across your bar here. They help just hold the material down real nicely. But when you're cutting something really thick, these white star wheels will actually leave indentations in your material, so that's why you need to move them all over to the right. And then we need to look here at our blade. Uh, this is B, which you can see the B on there. Um, and all we need to do is open the latch, lift out the blade housing unit, and then we just need to add in our deep cut blade. And so this is my housing unit that holds my deep cut. Now I'm on the Cricut Explorer. Of course, if you're out using your Cricut Maker, um, everything looks just a little bit different over there. Uh, but it's it's just as easy to change out your blades. All right, now we need to get our fabric ready onto our mat. I already kind of explained I want my bigger material on the top. So I'm just going to turn it upside down on my mat. Notice that I am using a purple mat because I'm cutting genuine leather today. And when you cut genuine leather, you need the strong grip mat. And then I am going to use my Cricut brayer just to make sure I have this onto my mat really nicely. So this will be a really easy earring to cut because it's just a few simple circles. Um, when you're doing either cutouts on the inside shape or you've got some kind of fringe, sometimes those kind of cuts do take a little bit longer. You will see three full cuts when you're doing the genuine leather, so we'll see it repeat the cut just a few times. For those of you new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. And anyone uh, coming back, just want to say thank you. I uh, really appreciate everybody continuing to visit and learn more about some of the different projects I've been working on. If you do find anything helpful today, I'd love it if you take just a minute and tap that like button. It really helps me as I'm, as I'm getting going. Um, I am going to be doing some projects um, with some of the genuine leather that I just purchased just to continue to show you other than Cricut what some of these leathers are like when you try to cut them. Uh, I'm getting ready to work on some St. Patrick's Day earrings and I've also got some, uh, some Easter earrings on the lineup as well. And then I think I already mentioned I'll be doing some debossing on my Cricut Maker. Okay, now this one did hit a little bit of a snafu. Oh, it didn't really hit a snafu. It was just my leather lifted just a little. So it will be good to take a look at this. And then I'm hoping that my holes cut okay. Those of you who know me know a lot of times I do not put holes in because the leather hole puncher works so beautifully. I often just like to do that myself. So let's see. Oh, we actually have a beautiful cut here. It looks like these circles just cut wonderfully on my mat and oh my gosh, they look amazing. I'm so happy, so happy with how these turned out. And you know what's funny, I'm looking at these circles, uh, the middle part, and I can use these for another earring. I will just punch a hole and dangle a little bit larger circle behind it. I love it when I have leather scraps that I can use again. Okay, this is crazy how super easy it was to cut these leather earrings. Let's talk about how we're gonna put them onto our hooks. I do wanna point out that the holes on these cut out perfectly. I didn't have any problems on either of my leather earrings with the earring hole. So I can usually tell, like I could kind of tell with this leather that it, that it would cut. I've used some different pieces of it and I could tell it would cut pretty well and it did, so that's good. All right, so the earring hooks I'm going to use today are these basic earring hooks. I have a great kit that I've linked up. It uh, comes with different um, jump rings, different color hooks. It actually comes with the jump ring tool, uh, which I don't have shown here, the round tool. It comes with a pair of pliers, really everything. It even comes with leather. It comes with everything you need to get started. And then I do have a second pair of earrings because I do want to show you something um, that I'm going to do with these earring hooks. And in the, in, with these earring hooks, I'm not going to add jump rings today. I'm actually going to put my earring 
right onto the ring. And I wanna show you how. It's easy to mess these up. And so I just wanna show you kind of the technique. Now, first I just wanna point out when you pull these balls back, um, you see that there's really a hole, or not a hole, I'm sorry, like the hook, it comes around and it's not completely attached. It, it's very similar to a jump ring. And so we're going to open it just like we do a jump ring. I'm going to put my pliers vertically on one side. You do want to know which side is the side that's not connected because that's the side you're pulling, you're going to pull forward or backwards. So my right side has the one that isn't connected. And then I'm going to take another pair of pliers on the other side. So basically I've got my two pliers and then I'm just going to pull my right side forward to open, see if I can get you to see it, to open that, to open that jump ring. It's not jump ring, but to open the hook. All right, because that's then how I can come in and I can add my earring right onto that hook. I'm gonna reposition my pliers a little to give me some room over here. Okay. Just have to get my, oh, you know what? I need to make sure as you're doing this, make sure your earring is facing back before you put it onto your hook. This one's kind of being tricky for me. I might be better off holding it upside down. Just because this ball's all, once you open it, that ball wants to fall, just makes it kind of tricky. Okay, Let's see, here we go. You can see here how that's going to hang. Now I do need to close it because it's still open. So I'm going to close it just like I do a regular jump ring. I've got to grab the, I've got to grab it here and I've got to grab it on my other side. Just grab it vertically. So you're really one and one, and that's just really important because you don't want to be bending the earring hook. You're just bending this piece. And I got it, it's perfect. See if you can see how that just closes right back up. And you have got your earring. And I like this technique, especially on these bigger earrings like this, where you don't want it takes a couple of jump hooks if you want it to end up facing forward. So you just have a jump hook and a jump hook and then a big earring. And so this is kind of a fun way to avoid that. So I'll go ahead and do another one here for those of you just learning this technique. Um, again, I'm what I'm gonna do, I'm right-handed. And so I, I don't know why I just like the open hook to be facing on the right. And then my right hand will be the one to pull forward. So I'm just gonna have it face that way and then just get this other plier in here and then pull this forward like it did. And then we found before it was easier to turn it upside down, so we'll do that again. I want it to face that way. So we got that on, turn back right side up. Get my pliers. It, it looks kind of misleading when you look at it, you think it's all bent. And the only reason it looks all bent is that these things have all fallen. You know, there's nothing holding them up, so they come down. So sometimes it can look like, oh no, it's messed up, but it's really not. It's just that those beads are coming down. All right, I'm gonna grab the other side with my pliers. Push that back up. That. See if it's up. Oh, yeah, it looks like it's perfect. Okay. And there we go. They are darling. Thanks so much for joining me today for my circle leather earring project. Um, here I just wanted to show you a couple other earring uh, earrings that I made. I did do a black pair. And then I just had fun. If you saw my other post about all those fun leathers in my genuine leather kit, this was just one of the really fun leathers that was in there. And I just wanted to kind of play around with how well it cut because it's super, super soft. And I just wanted to see how I could play with the colors just as a reminder. 
this is what that sheet of leather scrap look like. And so I just kind of wanted to play with the blues and the gray section of that. And I came up with these earrings, which I think turned out really cute. Again, thank you so much for watching today. If you found anything helpful, take just a second and tap that like button. That'll really help me with my channel as I get started. And good luck with all of your projects. Thanks everyone.